Roswell Flight Test Crew, here today to do our flight testing on the Parrot Bebop 2. To see the unboxing and setup, be sure to check out our previous video. And to keep up with the latest on drones, be sure to click subscribe. So the first thing we have to do before we go flying is calibrate the compass. And the first step to that is to remove any metal objects from your person and make sure you're standing well clear of any metal objects in the environment. Then we're going to follow the on-screen prompts in the app. We're going to have to rotate the aircraft through all three axes. Just follow the little picture on the screen. Start by rotating in the horizontal axis. After a few seconds, you'll see the screen change. And then we're going to rotate it nose first through the vertical axis. And again, the screen will change. And finally, we're going to rotate it around the roll axis. Do that a couple times and you're done. So let's start by taking a look at the automatic takeoff and automatic landing features. To take off, you push this button here and you can see it lifts off and hovers, does a pretty good job of that. But what's strange is that you cannot land it manually. Watch as I push the throttle stick down here, it gets about 18 inches off the ground and it just, it won't go any lower. I've never seen anything quite like that. So in order to actually make it land, you have to press the take off land button again. It lands kind of hard. I guess it's designed to take that, but that's a bit rougher than I'd like. Now this aircraft has got an ultrasonic sensor on the belly, which is how it knows what its altitude is to maintain that minimal hover. If you try and land on something soft, like a tuft of grass, I don't think it can quite read the altitude appropriately, because I've seen it do this weird sort of pogo stick behavior. In its sort of factory default settings, it's pretty staid. It's not a speed racer right out of the box. Position hold appears to be good, on par with uh, you know similarly priced drones I've flown. There is a bit of wind today and it generally holds its position. Now one of the things which is intriguing about the Bebop is that you can manually adjust the different flight modes right in the app. So you've got factors like the maximum inclination, which is say the angle it flies at, how quickly, it's tilt speed, uh, the maximum vertical speed up and down, the maximum rotation or yaw, and then finally whether or not it does bank turns. And you can make those adjustments on the app while you're flying. So uh, let's try that. I'm gonna crank everything up to maximum here. And, but it won't respond to any inputs, it's just in GPS loiter until you go back to the main flight screen where you've got your FPV view. Okay, that's quite a bit different. With all the settings on maximum, she's got a bit more get up and go, that's for sure. And doing bank turns is just kind of cool. I don't know that it actually affects flight performance all that much, but it sure does look neat and you feel real sporty making the turns that way. So one more thing to be aware of is that this is indeed a patch antenna. It's directional. It's stronger when it's pointing at the aircraft. And if you point it away from the aircraft, in the sides of the screen, you get these little red indicators that flash and tell you to get it pointing back at the aircraft. That's a cute little feature and good thing to keep in mind. So next up, I'm gonna give you a sample of some video recorded on board the aircraft. Now obviously this aircraft doesn't have a gimbal, but the digital image stabilization is far and away the best I've ever seen from an aircraft without a gimbal. I mean, it's, it's really quite astonishing. Now two things that's really important to keep in mind with this drone. One, every time you take off, it automatically starts recording. That apparently is just a feature. So keep an eye on that and if you don't want to be recording what you take off you have to fly out to your subject or whatever be sure to hit stop after you take off and then the second thing to be aware of is that this drone does not use an SD card all the video is recorded internally on internal memory and you have to hook it up directly to a computer using a USB cable in order to download that footage and there's just not enough room in the internal memory to record a full day of flying. One of the things that would make me believe this aircraft has a gimbal, even though it doesn't, is the fact that you can actually tilt that non-existing gimbal up and down with this controller at your fingertip here. Now for our gimbal torture test, even though there isn't a gimbal.
Here's our flight endurance test. As always, we land when the drone gives us a low battery indication. The Bebop 2 performed very well, but it's worth noting that we only got the warning when the battery was at 10%. So that was our flight test of the Parrot Bebop 2. Remember, you can check out the unboxing and setup in our previous video, and be sure to click subscribe to keep up with the latest on drones. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Fly safe.